This is a Cisco Wi-Fi 7 access point, and well, it's a little different. It's a universal access point or unified APs, you might hear the Cisco marketing say, but it's one SKU to buy. You can run this in the cloud with the Meraki dashboard or on-prem with your WLCs and maybe using Catalyst Center. And this one AP and one SKU covers every regulatory domain in the entire world. So being that it's this universal AP, the setup on this thing is again, a little bit different. So I'm gonna walk you through everything that you need to know to be successful when you purchase these things. And there's two big things we're gonna cover here today. One is flipping this thing from Meraki mode into on-prem WLC mode. And two is how you set the regulatory domain for these access points. I don't want anybody pulling their hair out, so I'm gonna walk you through all of this. Let's go ahead, we're gonna boot our access point here. And the first thing to know is that it's gonna boot into Meraki mode first. So it's gonna go and reach out to the Meraki cloud. If you're used to claiming devices inside of Meraki, none of that process here has changed. You're gonna see here, we're gonna form a tunnel called the next tunnel uh, between the access point and the Meraki cloud. It's gonna sit here for eight minutes. Uh, I've seen it sit there a little bit longer than that sometimes, but it should be about eight minutes. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna reboot and it's gonna try WLC mode once it's done rebooting. If you're gonna use these access points on premise, you can definitely wait that eight minutes for it to reboot into WLC mode. Or what we can do through option 43 is we can actually trigger something called fast offline migration. And basically we're gonna tell it through an option 43 hex value to flip over into WLC mode instead of waiting that eight minute time period. This is how you do the fast offline migration using option 43. The first thing that we're gonna do when we're building our option 43 hex value here is we're gonna take our controller IP address or IP addresses and first we're gonna convert them to a hex value, and that's that blue portion up here. Next, at the end here, we wanna tell it to boot into WLC mode. So we're gonna use the 02 value in the green there. If we wanna do Meraki mode for whatever reason, you would make that 01. Next, we need to tell it that we wanna go into fast offline migration. So at the beginning of this value here, we are gonna do an F three, if it's an F1 or an F2, it's gonna be normal mode. We're gonna wait those eight minutes. And then the last number we need to put in here is zero five. And this is an interesting one because this is your type length value or TLV. And the way that you build this or figure out what this value is going to be is you're gonna first see how many IP addresses you have in the middle here. So right now I only have one. So Every IP address is basically four bytes. We have one, two, three, four different octets, eight bits each, 32 bits equals four bytes. So I have four. Then I need to add my value at the end here, another eight bits or one byte. Four plus one equals five. Now, if I had two IP addresses in here, we are going to go from four to eight, and then again, plus one, we're gonna end up with a zero nine value here. So just be aware of how this, this whole thing works. And this is your option 43 value. You're gonna pop that into your DHCP server. You can definitely still use option 60. If you want to make sure that only your Cisco access points pull this value, you're gonna go ahead and map this value to your option 60 value. I'll put a link in the description below that kind of takes you into a little bit more detail around what those option 60 values are for the different access points. So if you're using option 43, you're all set. If you're not, and you're gonna use the layer two discovery, I do wanna point out one thing because in the newer versions of the 9800 series code, the layer two discovery mechanism was actually disabled. So the AP is gonna go out and broadcast looking for a controller, just like it's always done for the last 20 years but the WLC is not actually gonna respond. So if you're gonna use layer two discovery, make sure you turn this feature on. So SSH into your controller, you're gonna go into config mode, then you're gonna run the first command AP profile default AP profile, and that's gonna get, get you into your AP profile. And then we're gonna run the command capwap dash discovery onboarding all. And that's gonna go ahead and that's gonna turn on that layer two discovery mechanism. 
At this point, your AP should start to come online, whether it's registered to the Meraki dashboard or it's hitting your WLC on premise. So we're going to roll into the second part of this, which is setting that regulatory domain. Again, it's a universal access point. So we need to make sure that it's getting the correct regulatory domain. Now, if you're in Meraki mode, it's probably already set. The way that Meraki works is based off of where you assign this access point to the network and where that network lives in the world, plus what is the WAN IP address that that AP is coming in through, it sets that, hey, you're in the United States or you're in Europe, and it sets that regulatory domain for you. WLC mode, that's gonna be a little bit different, so let's roll through those options. So the first way that it's gonna go and try to find its country code is it's gonna send a discovery request and it's gonna take a look at what the other APs in the area are actually configured for. It's gonna go ahead and it's gonna try that a couple times and if it can't find anything, then it's gonna actually use the GPS chip that's built in. And you can see here that it was set through GPS, GNSS, and the AP is gonna reboot once it finds its mode. And if you wanted a proximity example, so this is learning from the other APs in the area, you guys can see it right there. And there's one more way too that we can get the AP to figure out the regulatory domain, and it's through something called a RAF file, a regulatory activation file. So the AP, it's a greenfield environment. There's no other APs in the area. Uh, there's no GPS signal. Maybe it's in a basement or something. How do we get this thing to come online? And unfortunately right now, the only way to do it is through the Meraki dashboard. So even though you're not using Meraki uh, with these access points, you're using an on-premise controller, you're still gonna go into the Meraki dashboard. You're gonna pretend to claim the access point even though it's not hitting the Meraki cloud. Once they're in there, you can go ahead and you can export a RAF file out of the Meraki dashboard and then you can import into the WLC. I've asked if we can kind of change this a little bit. We'll see how far that goes. I'd love another method so people that don't have a Meraki account, don't have to sign up for one. But as of today, that is your third and kind of last method. What I'd probably recommend doing is just staging uh, one access point close to a window first, so that way it gets it, and then boot up the rest of the access points, that way you don't have to deal with that. And the last thing to mention here, guys, is licensing. So make sure you have a unified license for your Wi-Fi 7 access points. The 9800 controllers and the new version of code, they can support the old style DNA licensing and they can support the UL licensing. So make sure that that's all mapped to your smart account. If you do not have a license for these APs and they're hitting the controller, that access point is gonna be in a limited mode. So only 2.4 gigahertz is gonna be enabled and you're gonna be limited as far as what you can do with the access point and configure it. So make sure you have a license available for it. And that's really it. It's, once you do this once or twice, it's really simple to get these things online. And it's really cool now, guys, that it's one SKU, one AP, and it takes care of everything for you. I wanna know your comments. Put some comments below. If you guys wanna start a discussion, I'm always here.